The generalization of Euler's formula gives us a relationship between the number of edges, vertices, and genus of a connected graph. So consider the corollaries. If we take our relationship and solve for g, we find And, since g must be a whole number, we'll round this fraction up. And so this gives us the minimum genus of a graph with v vertices and e edges. So earlier, we concluded that a graph with e edges can be embedded on a sphere with genus e choose 2. This could be very high, so can we find a lower bound? Well, let's consider Suppose an edge crosses one or more other edges. We could actually avoid all intersections simultaneously by putting this edge on a handle. So this means we only need a handle for every edge, giving us the genus is less than or equal to the number of edges. While we might not know the number of edges, the number is limited by the number of vertices, and this gives us a sharper bound. A graph with n vertices can be embedded on a sphere with n choose 2 handles. And equivalently, the maximum genus of a graph with v vertices is. So let's find the bounds on the genus of K5. So K5 has 5 vertices and 10 edges. And so first, we can find a lower bound, which will be And so the genus of K5 is at least 1. Next, we can find an upper bound, which will be V choose 2, and so that will be And so the genus of K5 is no more than 10. For bipartite graphs, we have, and we can prove this in the same way that we did for genus 0 graphs. So let's find bounds of the genus of K33. So K33 has 6 vertices and 9 edges. Since K33 is bipartite, all cycles are even. So all faces have at least three sides. And so our formula gives us... And so the genus is greater than or equal to 1. Next, our upper bound, v choose 2, will be... And so the genus is less than or equal to 15. At this point, remember Gauss's dictum, solve a problem any way you can, then find a better solution. So let's think about this. The limit of v choose 2 was based on the possibility that any two vertices could be joined by an edge. But in K33, the complete bipartite graph, vertices in the partite sets can't be adjacent. So in fact, there are only nine pairs of adjacent vertices, and putting each on its own bridge will give us a genus of nine. And in fact, we can leave one edge on the original surface, so we'd only need to add eight handles. And so the bound of the genus is less than or equal to eight. Now, since every graph on n vertices is a subgraph of Kn, then bounding the genus on Kn is a useful result. So let's think about this. Kn will have n vertices and n choose two edges. So we can substitute these into our formula. And let's clean this up a little bit. Let's get rid of that fraction by multiplying numerator and denominator by 2 and expanding, simplifying, factoring. And this gives us a useful result. The genus of Kn satisfies. Now with some effort, we can make the inequality an equality. And this gives us an important theorem 
first proved by Ringel, Youngs, and Meyer in the 1960s that the genus of Kn is exactly through essentially the same logic we find the complete bipartite graph Kmn must have And, again, with some effort, we can make this an equality. Ringel proved this a few years later, that Kmn has genus. So let's find the genus of K5 and K33, which are non-planar graphs. For n equals 5 vertices, we have... And so... The genus of K5 is 1. Since K33 is a bipartite graph, we have... And so again, K33 also has genus 1, so both can be embedded on a torus.